uh, because I got it out of the And whatever you're thinking, it's not what you meant. <laughs> I'm going to read a speech to you. And I've never done that before. I always speak extemporaneously. But somebody a few days ago said something in Liberty Square in New York City that so much captured the heart of this movement that I can't do better than that. As Lincoln once said, it's beyond my poor power to add or detract. So I'm going to read to you what Naomi Klein said in New York City. Naomi Klein. When this great movement of ours began, this is what she said. I love you. I love you. We love you. We love you. And I didn't just say that so that hundreds of you would shout I love you back. No, that's obviously a bonus feature of the human microphone. I'll try it again. I love you. I love you! Say unto others what you would have them say unto you, only way louder. I love you. I love you! Yesterday, one of the speakers at the labor rally said, we found each other. That sentiment captures the beauty of what's being created right here. A wide open space, as well as an idea so big, that it can't be contained by any space for all the people who want a better world to find each other. Amidst this economic crisis that's happening the world over, and we're so grateful that we can find each other. If there's one thing I know, it's that the 1%, the 1%, Okay, on Fox News tonight, you'll see Brown Booze Grayson. You will see that, I can guarantee you will see that. <laughs> and there's one thing I know is that the one percent loves the crisis. When people are panicked and desperate and no one knows what to do, that's the ideal time to push through their wish list, their wish list of corporate policy, privatizing education, privatizing social security, slashing public services, getting rid of the last constraints on corporate power. Amidst the economic crisis, this is happening the world over. And there's only one thing, one thing that can block that tactic, and fortunately, it's a very big thing. The 99 percent. Who are we? My people. Who are we? Who are we? And that 99% is taking the streets from Madison to Madrid to say, no, we will not pay for your crisis. Yeah. That slogan began in Italy in 2008 and ricocheted to Greece and France and Ireland. And finally, it's made its way to the square mile where the crisis began, Wall Street. And now it's made its way to... Orlando. Why are they protesting at the baffled pundits on TV? Meanwhile, the rest of the world asks, what took you so long? Yeah. We've been wondering. We've been wondering when you were going to show up and fight for what's right. Yeah. And most of all, people are saying, welcome. Welcome to the public forum. Many people have drawn parallels between Occupy Wall Street and the so-called anti-globalization protest that came to the world's attention in Seattle in 1999. That was the last time a global youth-led, I said youth-led, <laughs> decentralized movement took direct aim at corporate power. And I'm proud to be part of what we call the movement of movements. But there are important differences too. For instance, we chose summits as our target. Summits are transient by their nature, they only last a week. That made us transient too. We'd appear, we'd grab world headlines, and then we'd disappear. And the frenzy of hyper-patriotism and militarism that followed the 9-11 attacks, it was easy to sweep us away completely. Occupy Wall Street and Occupy Orlando, on the other hand, has chosen a fixed target. And we put no end date on our presence here. Wise, only when you stay in one place can you put down roots. This is crucial. It's the fact that the information age that too many movements spring up like beautiful flowers but quickly die off. It's because they don't have roots 
and they don't have long-term plans for how they're going to sustain themselves. So when the storms come, they get washed away. But being horizontal and deeply democratic, deeply democratic, <laughs> is wonderful. These principles are compatible with the hard work of building the structures and the institutions that are sturdy enough to weather the storms ahead. And I have great faith that that will happen. Something else with this movement is doing right. You've committed yourself to non-violence. You refuse to give the media You refuse to give the media the images of broken windows and street fights that it craves so desperately. In fact, when I look around here, I see a party. That's what I see. And that tremendous discipline has meant that again and again, the story has been unprovoked police brutality. We saw more of that just last night. But support for this movement grows and grows and grows. But the biggest difference the decade makes is that in 1999, we were taking on capitalism at the peak of its frenzy economic boom. Unemployment was low, stock portfolios were bulging, the media was drunk on easy money. Then it was about startups, not shutdowns. We pointed out that deregulation behind the frenzy came at a price. It was damaging to labor standards. It was damaging to environmental standards. Corporations were becoming more powerful in government, and it was damaging to our democracy. But to be honest, when the good times rolled, taking on an economic system based on greed was a tough sell, especially in the so-called rich countries. But 10 years later, there aren't any more rich countries. There's only a few rich people. And many of those people got rich looting the public wealth and the bailouts and exhausting natural resources around the world. The point is that everybody today can see the system is deeply unjust and careening out of control. Unfair greed has crashed the global economy and is crashing the natural world as well. We're overfishing our oceans, polluting our water, with fracking, and that's a strange word, isn't it, fracking? <laughs> and deep water drilling, turning to the dirtiest forms of energy on the planet. And the atmosphere cannot absorb the amount of carbon we're putting into it, creating dangerous global warming. The new normal is serial, disastrous, economic, and ecological. Those are the facts. They're so blatant, so obvious, that it's easier to connect with the public and make that the 99% than it was in 1999 and build this movement quickly. We all know... We all know, in some sense, that the world is upside down. We act as if there's no end to resources that are actually finite, like fossil fuels, and atmospheric space to absorb those emissions. We act as if, as if there are strict and immovable limits to what is actually bountiful, the financial resources to build the kind of society that we need. to turn this society around, to change this false scarcity, to insist that we can afford a decent, inclusive society, while at the same, same time respect the real limits of Mother Earth. I am talking about changing the underlying values that govern our society. It's hard to fit that into a single media-friendly demand, and it's hard to figure out how to do it. But that doesn't make it any less urgent. Look around and see what's happening in the square, in the way that you're feeding each other, keeping each other together, sharing information freely, providing health care, classes, empowerment training. My favorite sign here says, I care about you. Turn to the person next to you and say, I care about you. I care about you. I care about you. Now to the person on the other side, so here she doesn't show George. I care about you too. Nothing, nothing. And say, I care about you. Yeah. Anybody feels any way about that? That wasn't. I was trying to be funny. You know what I'm trying to say? Don't matter. What we wear, although I must say many of you are very well dressed today. Whether we shake our fists or whether we make peace signs. Whether we can fit our dreams for a better world into a single media soundbite, that doesn't matter. What does matter is our courage. Our courage! Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
our oral compass and how we treat each other. Yes. Yes. We have picked a fight with the most powerful economic and political forces on the planet. Do you see that building over there? That's their local office. The Chamber of Commerce. That's frightening. And as this movement grows from strength to strength, it will get more frightening. Always be aware that there will be a temptation to shift the smaller targets. That's the battle that we have to win. Don't give into that temptation. I'm not saying don't call each other on things, but this time let's treat each other as if we plan to work side by side in the struggle for many, many years to come. Because Because the task before us demands nothing less. Let's treat this beautiful movement as if it's the most important thing in the world. Because it is. It is the most important thing in the world. It is the way, the only way, forward. The only way to solve our problems. We have 24 million people in this country who can't find work. Maybe some of you are here today. Raise your hands. There's no shame in it today. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Many said to me, many Republicans say that, but it's not their fault. We have 50 million people in this country who cannot see a doctor when they're sick. Raise your hands if you have no health coverage. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. We have 47 million people in this country who need government assistance to feed themselves. They're on the food stamp program. We have 15 million families in this country, including my own, who owe more on their mortgage than the value of their house. 70% of the homeowners in Orlando. Raise your hand if you're one of them. It's not your fault. Wall Street has created, enforced, perpetuated a system that has created the greatest inequality of any industrial country in this world. We are fifth in the entire world in the inequality of wealth, just lower than in Zimbabwe. And how's it working for Zimbabwe? Not that well. Wall Street has completely dominated our economic system. Wall Street determines our economic policies. Big oil determines our environmental policies and our energy policies. And the military-industrial complex determines our foreign policy. And Wall Street exercises total control over one party, a wholly owned subsidiary, and gets all too many favors from the other party. We have to take back our government. It's government of the people, by the people, and all of our people. There is only one way out of this crisis. Only one way to fix this broken system. Look around, you're looking at it. This is the only way. Because of this, the people united will never be defeated. 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 Thank you very much.